This is the last section in Module 2 Financial Math, 10.4 Consumer Debt. So recall in Section 10.2, we discussed credit cards. Generally speaking, credit cards charge exceptionally high interest rates, but you only have to pay the interest rate if you don't pay the balance in full. This is a slide from 10.2. So remember that if you make just the minimum payment, you're carrying a balance from month to month, and then you'll be paying a lot of interest. But if you pay your balance in full, you pay no interest. So you have to be really careful about how you use your credit cards. In installment loans, which is a fixed immediate annuity. It's a series of equal payments made at equal time intervals for the purpose of paying off a lump sum received upfront. A typical installment loans are purchase of a car on credit or a mortgage on a home. An installment loan has a present value that we compute by adding the present value of each payment. Fixed deferred annuity has a future value that we compute by adding the future value of each payment. Okay, so let's talk about a red Mustang. <laughs> You've just landed a really good job and decide to buy a car of your dreams. It's a brand new Mustang. Now you negotiate it for a good price and you get it for $23,995 and that's taxes, license fees, everything. Now you saved $5,000 for a down payment and you can get a car loan from the dealer for 60 months at 6.48% annual interest. If you take a, a loan out from the dealer for the balance of $18,995, what would your monthly payments be? Sorry about that, guys. Let me shift that. There we go. What would your monthly payments be? So this is the amount you're taking out for the loan. Remember, that came from you already paid 5000 so we're subtracting those two numbers. Okay, what is the monthly payment and can you afford it? This is really important. You don't want to necessarily trust the financial department to determine this information correctly. Not because they can't or because they won't, but because it's not their job to make proper financial consumer decisions. That's the consumer's job. So you want to be able to kind of make these calculations yourself and go from here. So every time you make a future payment on an installment loan, that payment has a present value. So the sum of the present values of all the payments equal the present value of the loan. So in this case, this is the loan you're taking out. So although each monthly loan payment of the future value has a different present value, each of these present values can be computed using the following. So P is the present value of F the future paid over T months at the interest rate. So let's take a look at what that means. So in this example, the monthly interest rate is that amount, that's 6.48%. And it's monthly interest, so it divides by 12, and it gives us this rate here. So the present value of the first payment is of F is this right here. And then to the second power, the third payment, all the way to our 60 payments. So when we add them all together, we need to get this number, right? That's the number that we owe them. Now, don't worry because they have lots of calculators. I need to, do not panic. You're not supposed to do this by hand. I'm just showing you where the numbers come from here. So what ends up happening is we end up getting 371. Now, although you may have negotiated a good price for the car when you throw in all the financing, it might not be a great deal. Let's take a peek here. So 60 payments of 371 actually ends up paying t over 22,000. Now you might be thinking, oh, I negotiated 23, I'm getting a deal. Don't forget you already paid 5,000. So you're really looking at close to 27,000 for the car. And even with adjusting for inflation, it might not be the greatest idea. Now, amortization is something that is talked a lot about in mortgage payments. If an installment loan is paid off in T payments of F dollars at a periodic interest, then this is the formula. And again, the beauty of the internet is all these calculators are, these formulas are built into calculators you can find online. So during certain times of the year, the car dealer actually offers incentives. They offer cash rebates and reduced financing, including 0% APR. Now that means you're just borrowing money for free. You don't have to pay. You cannot pay the month. You can pay monthly without paying off the balance and not have to pay any interest. So, which of these two is the better deal? Because you still want that Mustang. All right. So you remember you got that Mustang down to this price, and you pay. You've got five thousand for the down payment, and now you're just deciding: Do I want the cash rebate or do I want zero percent for sixty months? 
So if you choose the cash rebate, you will have a balance of $16,995. Remember, you owed eighteen, dollars And then you have to finance it at that standard rate of 6.48. So if you choose the free financing, so it's the other option, you would have to pay that $18,995, but you would have 0% for 60 months. What's the better deal? So remember, we're going to plug it in. And again, there are calculators online. And for the calculators online, you would just say, okay, this is how much I'm financing. This is how, much, how long I'm financing it for. And this is the rate I'm financing it at. And it'll come out to $332. So that's how much you'll be paying monthly. Option two, you decide to go 0% APR, but you've got to finance this much over 60 months. Now again, don't have to memorize this. There's calculators online. This is your principal. This is the loan amount. This is your rate. And this is the time period. So it comes out to be $316. So what is the better deal? You actually want to take the 0% financing offer. So hopping online, plugging in these numbers, and knowing how to compare them can save you a lot of money over time. And so I strongly encourage you to take a moment. You'll need to do this for your um, home buying project anyway. But take a moment, Google mortgage calculators, Google car loan calculators, and all of them, and plug in different numbers and see how the monthly payments change, see how the interest rate you plug in, Google the current rates, and see kind of how that affects how much you're putting in. Maybe you want to put more down. Changing the down payment can really change your monthly payments and how much you pay over time. So that concludes module two. We'll be using all this information in our home buying project.